Thank you. So uh, my talk is about um, local development improvements. Um, yes, I, I, I talk about my, my setup with uh, the Twisted Bytes Vagrant box and PHP Storm. And yes, so let's get started. So who am I? I am um, Werner Kraus from originally from my lower Bavaria home country, lower Bavaria. And now I'm living in Austria in Bad Ischl. That's the town without the G. So it's not Ischl, which became very famous this March. It's Bad Ischl. It became famous a hundred years ago due to another reason, but um, I don't want to go too deep into that. Some of you might know me from Slack as WMK, and I'm doing PHP since uh, 1998, and I started my own company in 2006, and yeah, some years later, someone pointed me on this uh, to this book from Ingo about Silverstripe, and then I fell in love with Silverstripe, and so uh, yes, here I am. Yeah. So what's this talk about? It's about my uh, development setup with PHP Storm, the, the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, the Vagrant box, Vagrant for um, setting up virtual machines, and especially about uh, Dirk's Twisted Bytes Vagrant box, which comes very good pre-configured for, for my daily usage. Um, yes, some settings I, I found to be very practical and some tips and tricks. So, Vagrant. In case some of you don't know Vagrant, um, it's, an, it's an easy tool. It's an abstraction layer for setting up virtual machines by a configuration file, and you can easily fire up uh, pre-configured boxes and configure them for yourself. It's quite easy to set up for local development and you can share your development environment for the whole team. So the whole team can uh, work on the same virtual machine. And in the best case, it's pretty much the same setup like the server where your application will run later on. There are many ways to configure it and to, to run abstractions against it with Ansible or Puppet or whatever. And there are also many pre-configured boxes with a, a wide range of functionalities. It has also some downsides um, on Windows. Um, the shared folder is very slow. On, on Linux or on Mac, it's a little bit faster. But on Windows, um, it's pretty slow. Also, um, one big pro with Vagrant is uh, that you have the, the project files on your local machine and they get mapped into the box. So the you develop locally on your Windows or, or Mac, but these files are shared or synchronized to this virtual machine to the to your web server. And another downside is when you want to upgrade the box because there is a new release with new features or something like that, um, everything that is saved inside the box will be destroyed. So especially with uh, a database, you need to, um, yes, you need to download it, you need to dump it first and then to import it again. What do we need? Well, um, of course, the IDE, PHP Storm in this case, um, VirtualBox for running the virtual machines and Vagrant. Um, I also use the host manager plugin. I love it very much. Um, this way you get uh, nice URLs for your virtual machines and it automatically updates your ETC hosts file. And of course, of course, the pre-configured box, in this case, Dirk's Twisted Bytes web server box. 
I put in the links to this uh, here in my slides. So later on, you can get the links from the slides. Yes. Um, in PHP Storm, um, you can communicate with the virtual machine very easily. So it is a, a first class citizen. Like your local um, development, you can um, somehow tell um, PHP Storm that you're developing on a vagrant environment. And then it's pretty easy to set it up. PHP Storm comes with shortcuts for starting, stopping, and so on, the virtual machine. And you can also easily work inside the virtual machine uh, for running Composer, PHP unit, and so on. And I will show um, this later in detail. So the box. Um, yes, Dirk, the, the Dirk box was is, is around for some years. He first uh, talked about it in Ljubljana. And <clears throat> yes, I, I for myself, I use it for two years now. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Yes. So it comes only with the best ingredients. So it comes with uh, different PHP versions, which you can easily switch. So you still have a 5.6 version for older environments or for older projects. You get the latest PHP 4 and even a PHP 8 beta version. But unfortunately, um, yes, the latest Silverstripe uh, packages don't really run on PHP 8 yet. It has MariaDB um, and also Postgres since the last release, so something like that. It comes with PHP My Admin as a Swiss Army knife for uh, manipulating the database on the fly. It has a mail catcher included, which comes very handy when you um, when you're working with sending emails. Of course, it won't work when you um, when you set up SMTP. But if you don't set up anything special on your development environment, you can then um, check the emails that are get sent by your application. It also has Redis. And even SSPAC for uh, importing and exporting your, your whole Silverstripe data, the assets and the database. So you can configure it very easily with a so-called background file. Um, so this is a, the, the one snippet I, I always change on my on my boxes, um, you set the the node name of your machine. In this corner, in this case, I used Stripe Con Talk, and it comes uh, with the pre-configured uh, domain tbdev xyz. This is a real existing domain, and uh, Dirk also uh, provides uh, a real working. SSL certificate, so you can also test HTTPS. You, you can test your projects if they work correctly on HTTPS with a real certificate. And you should um, uh, you should define a unique IP address for your box. Um, unfortunately, the the host manager plugin doesn't work with dynamic IPs in Vagrant yet. At least I didn't get it working. You could also uh, use the same IP for every box, but then you cannot fire up two boxes at the same time. So sometimes when I'm working on a project and I get an urgent hotfix in, I need to fire up the, the virtual machine of the other box. So yes, yeah. so let's go to to my PHP storm. So here we have um, the background file I talked about. 
here. What do I have below? Uh, I have a variable for my NFS mount options. This, this is a way to get the, the shared folder a little bit faster, a little bit more, more speed on the shared folders on Windows. Then here is some host manager configuration. I copied it from, from Dirk's boilerplate. Yeah, and this is the, the main line in this um, configuration file. It tells Vagrant, use this box. Use the Twisted Bytes box, the web server, and then fire it up. And below we have some synced folders. So you see some folders here, the site folder, here it will be synced to data site on the virtual machine. Yes. And when you um, when you start the box, it will output a little bit. I started it already because it might take a, some time. So you also see, oh, a new version of Vagrant is available. Please update. It would also check if Dirk uh, made a new box with newer PHP versions or new features. Then it it starts and outputs a lot, a lot of stuff. It shows the latest uh, PHP versions that are installed. And here you also see some um, more informations about it and which folders were synced to which place in this case. Yes, so. Let's go to the next um, slide. So how can you configure your box? There are um, a lot of configuration files and the different directories um, inside this uh, Vagrant folder. And you can configure the web server root, where is the your web root of your virtual host. You can configure if you want to use HTTPS or not. You can install additional packages on your server, either uh, Debian packages or other stuff. You can switch the PHP versions on the fly without need to restart the, the whole box. So it has some file watchers running um, where you, when you can, where you can switch between the different PHP versions. This is very handy for, for testing manually. You can switch xDebug on and off the debugger. Um, I asked uh, Dirk a year ago if, if he could make it switchable because when you're, when, yeah, when I'm working in the front end section, I don't need the debugger, but when I'm in the working in the back end, I often need it. And yes, logging in into the box and switching it on and off manually is just, um, yes, a little bit cumbersome. And so now we have a, a good configuration of option. You can import and export databases. And there's also a folder where you can put in database dumps. So when I get um, from, from an agency I often work for, um some some problem um on the web page i can say hey can you please send me the latest dump from the database and then i can fire up my box i get an sql dump put in an, in a folder and then i can import it very easily in php my admin yes so a little hands on Where can we um, change the PHP version? I can go, this is in the PHP versions conf, in Vagrant config. And here um, you can switch between 5.6, 7.0 and so on. 
and here you can say X debug is on and off. Okay, now we say, Werner, you can tell us a little, uh, very much, but um, how can we test this right now? So um, this is the web server. Currently it's just, well, it get a, gets a 404. And here in site doc root is the doc root, the document root by default. So when I add an index PHP, nope. So right click new PHP file, I call it index PHP. And here we just say PHP info, no, PHP info, yeah. And save it. And then in the web browser, when we, re when we reload the page, now we get the PHP info. And here we see we have PHP 4.7 and xdebug is, Is it enabled or not? We can search here. So it is not enabled. Okay. So let's go back to our PHP version. Now we could uh, switch the PHP version. When we have a very old project, we could say we want to switch to PHP version 5.6. And we could say, please switch on xdebug. We save the file. It takes a second or two. And when we reload the page, it will show us, hopefully. Yeah, now we are on version 5.6. And when we search for xdebug, we have 67 settings and it is enabled. So this is very fine. Yeah, and that's basically how you set up your, your PHP and your web server. So this is in the doc root here is the web server. Yeah. Okay, so with uh, PHP my admin, it is available under the sub URL PMA and you can uh, dump um, you can put your dumps in the PMA upload folder. So let's look at it. Here is PHP my admin here in my local box under PMA. And here you can um, check your here you can um, log in to PHP my admin. So um, when it comes to database, the databases are configured in private databases any. And here you could configure your, your username and the password. It's a default site for the database, the username and the password. And we need this for um, for the password. And voila, PHP my admin loads. Maybe I should switch off the debugger again. Yeah, the debugger fired. Okay. Let's send it again. And here is PHP my admin, and we could um, yeah, create tables or just do stuff. When we want import, we go to, to import in the PHP my admin. And well, I could choose a, a file from the from the upload directory, but there isn't a file actually in it. So where is my dump? It's here. 
when we put it in the PMA upload directory here, the imported SQL and reload the importing. Now I can choose it here and say, okay. And then we get a, well, very simple database. <laughs> this is imported. So this um, came pretty handy in the past. So you can also um, um, trigger the box to, um, to dump your database and to import it again. So if you just want to back up your database when you're working on something, then it's very easy to put it in again. There are also some configuration files in private MySQL dump trigger and MySQL load trigger conf. And it saves um, all the stumps in a node in this own folder. Yeah. So let's go again to our PHP my admin. We might add a new data set now. Or whatever we can create a new table now. Here is it. So on insert, I can make a new things. And now we have two data sets here. When we switch back to our uh, vagrant box here in private MySQL dump trigger conf, it's normally, of course, it's not active. And here, when we say true and save this file, then some seconds later, we should see here the default site SQL. And here we have a log text and here we see my test from the last days and now here MySQL not active and just this minute at 1620, it dumped the database. So um, if we delete this table, then we can go back. switch off the dump trigger and we can go to MySQL load trigger. Then we can say it true. We could say uh, clear the whole database before or not and which database to, um, to import. When we save it, it will take this um, default site SQL GZ file and import it. And when we say here, now it's loaded again. And when we go to our database, here we are, the data is here again with all that this two um, data sets. So, well, if you're not convinced uh, already, um, you could also add your own binary files here when we put it in private bin directory. Um, I added the, the SS pack to this and then I logged into the box and found out, oh, it's already configured with the box. So if you need any other binaries for your uh, developing or for your projects, you can easily put it in your binary directory. So that's the box so far. 
with the IDE. So PHP Storm, you can um, tell PHP Storm to connect to the to the background box very easily. So you can add it as a remote interpreter. And then later on, you could set up Composer and even, um, yes, yeah, so you can work with Composer on the box in your IDE. So you don't have to log into your box and and um, run the Composer com comments. It's very handy in your, um, when you can do it in this IDE. So let's go to the settings. And here in languages and framework in PHP, you can set up here the, the remote interpreter. And here you can say, well, let's, let's delete this now and set up one again. So you can say a new CLI interpreter in your IDE from Docker, Vagrant, a virtual machine or whatever. And from Docker, no, not from Docker, from Vagrant, it checks the, um, the current box and you can say, okay. And a second later, you have new, your new remote PHP 5.6 interpreter. Well, I think it's it's 2020. We should we should cancel right now and update our PHP version. Yes. So we recap. It was in. PHP versions conf. Oh yeah, I love when PHP Storm wants to synchronize everything. So in config PHP versions conf, we of course want the latest and greatest version. So now again, go to the PHP and we want to remove this. Okay, and now make a new one. Okie dokie. And now we have remote PHP 7.4. Uh, no debugger installed. Of course, we didn't switch it on. And yeah, can apply it. And okay, and we are ready to go. So it also, um, um, it also maps this path mapping. So in my Vagrant Talk site, you know, PHP Storm now automatically knows on which path it's on the virtual machine. So we don't have to map anything else. So the next one is setup composer. So we say we have the this remote CLE interpreter from the remote interpreter. And, oh, we don't have a composer JSON found. Hmm. That's a pity. Okay. So, yeah. In our project, in our doc root, we can create a new file, a new composer JSON file. And we can now say require silver stripe cms which version do we take we take higher than 46 and we could also say uh, require dev we want PHP unit PHP unit greater five point seven we always have, yes, yes, so greater five seven. And then we can say install the stuff. And when installing this, it now connects to the to the box. 
So I should delete my index PHP before. And now it connects to the box and tries to update all this stuff. So this takes a little bit. We can show the log and see what's going on. I installed it before on the box for, for testing. So now it, it can load from the composer cache. Otherwise it would just take too long from here. So in the meantime, do we have any questions at the moment? Yes, the, the CLI integration is, is really cool, Lars. Yes. <laughs> I don't use Docker. I'm I'm more this vagrant guy. Well, most mostly uh, because um, I didn't want to set to set up my laptop again for using Docker and and Docker on Windows. It's uh, I, I've read it's a bit a, a bit of a pity, and I don't want to crush my my working machine. So. <laughs> yes, dirkbox.com is available. That's cool. Okay, so still, um, um, my laptop is a little bit slow for this. And it tries to scanning all the files, which is a, also additionally a very annoying in PHP storm. So sometimes it's just slow. But I think um, so now it also exposes all the stuff. And now we see uh, we have here resources vendor. And what did I do wrong? I missed to create the public directory. Which is sometimes a little bit um, Annoying. So, yes, it's it's the the ease of the setup. So you can share uh, your your setup, your um, environment with other with other team members. It's quite easy, and when it's when it's standards are uh, when you have standards in your company where can work is with it's it's pretty cool normally when i set up a project yes okay you can go for a coffee in the meantime or just do something else yeah So you've also seen with uh, Composer, you can uh, manage all these packages on the box directly. So um, before um, I was running Composer locally and it synced into the box and then it was just uh, problematic when I was locally on, on a different PHP version than on the box, but uh, set up local more uh, PHP versions for different projects is also very difficult. So now I, it just, um, logs into the box and installs it there from there with the remote interpreter. And this is 
very great. Um, when you have uh, many uh, many source packages, you might run into issues, and then you need to install a GitHub token on the box. But this is also doable. Yes. Now, so we are again. So now it's everything is installed. Unfortunately, I forgot the public directory. But yes, now it is installed. And do we have? Resources vendor. Something went wrong um, with my composer JSON file. Yeah, but you see, you can easily install stuff. Yeah. So. That's a bit um, annoying right now. So let's work over this. Um, normally, I also uh, create the silver stripe cache directory. In my document route for, for easy flushing, um, and of course, uh, the, the public directory for the web route. And I'm going to make a new uh, index P PHP file. This is public. Um, and when we now go to our web server, it will Say not found, yes, because we didn't tell the box to switch to the public directory. And here in the web server configuration, you can say, where is the doc root? Where's the document root? And now standard, uh, normally it's the doc root. And when you need to move it to the public directory, then I say public. Here you could also switch uh, the SSL certificate and redirect to HTTPS. So when we re reload again, now we are here. This is public. We are in the public directory. Okay. So I hope not to annoy you too much, but for showing the other stuff. Um, I must uh, delete this again. and make a new composer JSON file. This comes pre-configured. And for some reason, why, why didn't it expose all the other stuff? Hmm? Nah. Yeah, so normally I'm, I'm more this copy paste guy in the in the composer JSON. So let's take this 
and again require dev no Uh, PHP unit, PHP unit. Okay. And while indexing or updating. And I am pretty lost right now. So let's install it again and hopefully it works this time. So now I have the public directory and the Silverstripe cache directory in here. And Let's see if it works better now. So Xdebug is also very easy to use uh, with this box. Um, I cannot live without it, but please don't tell my wife now. Um, also the mapping with PHP Storm is very easy. Before I switched to PHP Storm um, about seven years ago, I was using uh, NetBeans or Eclipse, and, and it was it was just difficult to set it up. Um, as I said before, it slows down the PHP interpreter, so it's really good that you can um, switch it on or off. And yeah, that is cool. So how can you? switch it on or off so it still installs. Um, I said before in the PHP version, we can say xdebug on. Hmm. Let's see if it's a good idea to switch the, the PHP on the machine while um, Composer is installing. Yep. No. Okay, it still works. So yes, I will show XDebug when it's installed, when it's finally installed. Um, PHP unit, you can also easily run tests remotely from your uh, IDE and you get a very nice output. So with really green buttons and red, and red buttons and so on. And the best is um, you can click on the line where the error occurs and then you can switch to it. And it is also possible to debug unit tests. So sometimes I, I debug against unit tests and I work against unit tests, especially when I'm working with Silver Shop and I have to do something in the, in the checkout process. So all these uh, special cases with uh, shipping fees when you only have physical products and no, no digital products or some kind of discount stuff or, or other cal calculations, it's it's pretty uh, annoying to go to the cart, put in some products, go to the checkout pro process and see if everything is calculated correctly. So it's, it's easier for me to work against unit tests. To get them running in the first, uh, first is a little bit difficult 
because um, the whole silver shop is a bit more complicated um, a model. But when you have it running, it's really great. It's totally great. So, yes, and there are also uh, remote tools. Remote tools are very handy. So you can um, go to, um, you can trigger something on your box from your uh, PHP storm and you, config you can configure it like you want. So I made remote tools for uh, flushing caches, for using the Silverstripe cache. Um, it, it deletes everything which is in Silverstripe cache and then the cache is flushed one time. Then I can go to my website, fire it on again and it will um, create the manifest again. And <clears throat> you can also flush uh, the caches for, for, the, for the unit tests because the unit tests don't run on the, um, as the web server, they run as the SSH user. And so you have two different uh, caches to flush for the website and for the unit tests. And this is sometimes pretty annoying when you change something and the unit test doesn't catch this. Um, I also made a, a handy shortcut for window expose. You can also run any commands with uh, with uh, dev build or, or sake, something like that. So when we go back to our PHP storm, it is still installing, but we can have a look here to the uh, tools and here are the remote SSH tools. And these are, I, I made them and vendor expose um, is just calling composer. The composer command with the arguments window expose. And then it's very important to tell it the working directory that it's on the machine. So it's vagrant site doc root. Otherwise it would take the windows working directory, but I don't have this, uh, this directory on my machine because it's a, it's a Linux machine and we have different path mappings. And then we can say uh, which which um, which box to use. And this time, so in this case, we I use this. And then you can fire this um, comments later on. Um, when you want to to flush, I have uh, the the remove comment, um, and it's. Um, deletes the default site directory, which is the web server user and the vagrant directory, which is the CLI user inside my Silverstripe cache directory. And this is some kind of a, of a one-time flush. I, I wrote before in the chat, um, when I put uh, the flush parameter to my website um, and I, then it flushes, then I program a little bit and then I hit F5 and I'm annoyed because it flushes again, even if it doesn't have to flush. And yeah, so I decided to make this flush comment available inside PHP Storm. The third comment I want to show uh, is the dev build comment because sometimes it's just um, comfortable to trigger a dev build from your IDE. Of course, you can just go to the, you can just open a new tab in your browser and make it, build the database. In this case, I said, yes, go to the vendor bin, use the sake comment with the arguments dev build flush and the working directory is vendor bin. And then it builds the database, which is Pretty handy. Did, did I already say this is pretty handy? Yes. Okay. So now we have a public directory. We have a index PHP. We have our app here and we have the Silverstripe cache running. So let's go to the 
browser and run it and now it will um, create all the databases it will run dev build on the first on the first run and of course this takes a little bit of time again <laughs> yes a, a linux machine running on windows um yeah yeah some years ago i switched back to windows for some reasons mainly because i'm also teaching uh, uh office here and for adults at a, at a local um kind of of adult university here in Bad Ischl and so so I need to to work with this stuff yeah <laughs> okay of course setting up local when you have a good local setup it might be much faster uh but running it on a virtual machine has other advantages. So Lucas, that's that's totally true. And when you are um, on the terminal, it might be okay. So, oh, what happened? We didn't tell Silverstripe to use the environment where, where the database is. So. That's easy to to um, to solve. Just put on dot env file here. So I copy my environment file to this, and here it is. So um, even you can even use this environment file for all um, uh, for all your boxes. So the database name, I said before, it's just default site, the password, the server is localhost. Um, I also always put in my default admin username and password, set the environment type. And on Windows, it's very important to set the vendor method to copy because I cannot work uh, with sim links. It just doesn't work. So here we have, do we have? Yes, we do. It worked for some reason this time. And then we can run it again. Yes. So that's a classical Vorführ uh, effect we say in Germany. And yes. So now it should work. Yes. Okay, Vorführ effect. Yes, Vorführ effect. It's uh, how how should I explain it? It's when when you show something, it doesn't work, um, and you tested it before, it works. So, Vorführ effect is when when it doesn't work in a live situation. Yeah. I also um, ha had a little gimmick for, for Flash because uh, in, in Bavaria, my, my uh, home country, Lower Bavaria, uh, we also say uh, Flash beer. So I put something to Flash after this talk right beneath me. So yeah, some little bad puns on this and it's still working and working and taking some time. So do we have some tables already nope <laughs> yes flush flush comes from uh from the german word flasche for a uh, bottle and flush is so the 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 abbreviation the 
the short word for flush it. Yes. So it ran the, the dev build. Everything went fine. And now we have at least a basic site running. Hopefully, let's see if it works. Yes, we are here. We have it now. We made it. Um, so now I have here a silver stripe cache. We made this for a default site. And now I want to flush. Yeah. Um, and then I can just type in flush into the actions um, tab when I when I run for actions, which is a control shift A on Windows. And then what happens? Does something happen? You're still the debugger running. Nothing happens for some reason. So I go again to flush and click this. And then normally it should ask me uh, which virtual machine to use. Or it should just work. So it uses the current background. So let's say select the SSH configuration. Okay, apply. Okay, run it again. Now, yes, now we can say background. And we also get some <clears throat> stale file handle stuff. It's a first time every time. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so we even have something uh, more in case. You could also uh, set any stuff, uh, any value uh, variables of your PHP any. And um, sometimes you need to debug uh, stuff that comes via an, via an SSH tunnel, via ng-rock. And in the past, I had to log into the, to the um, machine and change the, the xdebug any files so that I can switch these settings to, to, for ng-rock and not locally. Um, and then while um, working on this talk, I found out you can um, even, th there is already something to configure uh, for this any values that you cannot change in, on runtime. And in Vagrant config, the phpfpmpool.conf file, there you can um, configure on the fly your, your xdebug settings and then it works with Andrew Rock. I tested it before, so you can trust me, it works normally. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's pretty handy. When would you have to debug Andrew Rock um, connections? Um, for me, mostly it's when, when I'm working with uh, OmniPay gateways. Um, yeah, then you this these gateways, uh, when you make a payment, the, this gateway is sometimes uh, make a direct call to the web server. And when the web server is in my office behind the, the firewall, they cannot access me from outside. Then I fire up an Andrew Rock instance and it I can access my website from outside. So this is pretty handy. Yeah. Okay, and that was it so far. Any more questions from your side? Yes. So yes, Lucas, I normally um, disable xdebug when I don't have to use it, which is uh, very handy in this box. And then it's a little bit uh, more, more speedy, my, my setup, yeah. 
So yes, uh, Dirk also uh, pointed a link to this to his project templates. There are uh, many stuff. There are many templates for different uh, settings for Laravel or for Silverstripe and so on. And that's also where I uh, got my first background file from. 